Hey everyone, Clayton here with Action VFX. Today we are going to be taking a look at our new Breaking Glass collection. The collection includes 26 real breaking glass elements and glass bullet hits. They come pre-keyed and are ready to be composited into your scene. This is the shot we will be recreating. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start off by viewing the original plate to break down what all is going on in this shot. Our original shot was shot on a tripod with the car window rolled down. We kept the tripod in the same spot and filmed the window rolled up with the black screen behind it to retain the glass and reflections. By doing this, we are able to have our actor behind the window and record without obstruction. It's easier to add the glass in afterwards than it is to composite behind glass and remove the window for the shatter. These glass pane elements are what we will be building the window shatter from. The wide angle shows the glass shattering and also the impact of the pieces hitting the ground. We will use this for the shattering window and also pull freeze frames to have some glass pieces stay in the window frame. Next we will use these glass bullet hits to show the windshield getting shot. We will also utilize the free fractured glass textures available on the website to add further detail to the shot. We're just going to cover the glass elements in this tutorial, but if you want to take your shot a step further, adding muzzle flashes and metal bullet holes from our free bullet hole texture pack are a great addition to the scene. Alright, so we are going to start off with the plate and nothing else. We will bring in the window shot and mask out the window to line up with the plate. Now that it's lined up, simply set the window overlay to screen. This is easier than creating a fully digital window because it still retains reflections and looks like there is a window there. It's looking a little off, so let's make some adjustments to blend it better. Add a curves effect and decrease the highlights. We will also add a little bit of green and a little bit of blue to better match the tint of the window. Next, we will add a tint effect and set the black level to a bluish color. You can pick a shade from the windshield like this. Next, we will map the whites to a very light blue color. Alright, so that's looking a little bit better. Even though we shot this on a tripod, when our actor takes cover there is a slight amount of shake in the car. So in order to fix that, we'll track this shot in Mocha. Since we've covered this tracking more extensively in other tutorials, which you can check out here, I will be going through this process quickly. First, apply Mocha Pro or Mocha for After Effects, which is included with your After Effects subscription, to the layer you want to track. Navigate to the center of the area you would like to track and create a spline around the shape you are tracking. I'm choosing the door since that's where the window will be placed. Once the spine has been created, track forward and then return to the middle to track backwards. Once it's done, you can save and return to After Effects. Create the tracking data and apply it to a null object called Door Track. Change this to transform, apply the door track null, and apply export. Parent the window to the null, and now it will match the shake in the door. Now that we have the unbroken window placed in the shot, let's shatter it. Let's find a good frame to start on. The frame where our actor Cody flinches is perfect as it looks like he's reacting to the glass breaking. Cut the window layer on the frame after this. Let's use tempered glass wide 5. Since the record frame rate is 96, we need to interpret the footage and set the frame rate to 96 frames a second so it plays back in real time. Add in tempered glass wide 5 and line it up where the scale matches the distance the glass needs to fall. Place the center of the shatter where you would like your impact to occur. Then we'll mask out the top of the window so it fits in the frame. We want the entire window to shatter and currently this shatter isn't big enough to fill the window. 
We will need to add more glass elements to fill the frame. I'm going to do that now. Now that we've added some more glass panes, mask out the side edges so it looks like one solid piece shattering. I masked out the door and had some of the glass elements fall behind it. I also have some on the front just to add some variation and some realism to the shot. Place in as many panes as you need to fill your window. Alright, so now we have all of the glass in, but it's not looking real yet. We need to adjust the look of the glass. I'm going to turn off the other glass layer just so we can focus on this one. All of these effects can be applied to the other layer afterwards. First, let's add some motion blur to the glass as it falls. I like to use the plugin Real Smart Motion Blur Pro, but if you don't have that, the native plugin Pixel Motion Blur will work just fine. Apply Real Smart Motion Blur and change the blur amount from 0.5 to 0.1. That's looking better. Now let's match the color of the car window by adding a curves effect. Increase the highlights, but first add a point at the bottom so we don't adjust the shadows. Let's also add a little bit of blue and green to match the tint. This is closer, but I think we can add a little bit more bluish green tint to the highlights. Do this by adding a tint effect and changing the white adjustment to a light blue. Change the amount to tint to 10. That's looking better but it doesn't match the thickness of the car window yet. We can fix this pretty easily by adding a drop shadow effect to the layer. Pick a light blue color for the shadow color. Decrease the opacity to 60% and set the direction to match the perspective, 169 for me. And also set the distance to four. That's definitely giving this a little bit more depth. Let's add a little bit more depth on top of this by duplicating this layer, calling it Tempered Glass Wide 5 Base Color, and adding a fill effect. Map the color to a bluish green, and now add a Gaussian Blur of 8.7. This is looking better, but still lacking in realism. Let's add the reflections back on top to the broken pieces. To do this, first I'm going to duplicate the window layer we were just adjusting and add an exposure effect. Change the exposure to 10, and this will be used as our mat. Now let's go down, grab the reflection mat, duplicate that. Rename this reflection and set this to LumaMat. Now you can see we have the original reflections back over top of the glass. Once all of the glass has been added to the windows, let's go one step further and add some details. Let's add shadows to the glass pieces that fall in front of the door. I'm going to turn off the glass that's behind the door now to simplify things. Duplicate both tempered glass wide five and the base color layer and add the words door. We will split the glass windows up into three sections, window, door, and ground, based on the different planes for shadows. Mask out the area you want the shadows to appear on. For us, it's the door. All right, copy the mask to the base layer and then duplicate the non-base color layer and call it door shadow. Set the pre-existing mask to subtract and add a mask expansion of one. This way we don't have the two layers doubling up. Add another drop shadow effect to the door shadow layer we just created. Select a color from one of the existing shadows in the shot for shadow color. Set the opacity to 25, the direction to 169, the distance to 40, and the softness to 18. This is a nice subtle detail to help further sell the scene. 
And I'll toggle this on and off so you can see the difference. See, that's nice and subtle. Now let's add some contact shadows to the glass that piles up on the ground. Duplicate the window glass layers and rename them ground glass. Set the mask we added earlier to subtract and add a new mask that only includes the ground portion of the shot above the subtraction masks. Duplicate a ground layer and call it contact shadow. For this contact shadow layer, you will want to animate the mask to hide the shadow when it's falling through the air since there wouldn't really be a contact shadow until it touches the ground. Add another drop shadow effect and sample another shadow from the scene for shadow color. Change the opacity to 10, the direction to 236, and the distance to 5. We won't put any softness on this since it's so close to the ground. Maybe one. Yeah, we'll do one. Move the contact shadow below the other two ground glass layers, that way so the shadow is underneath the glass elements. Next we will add some shadows as the glass falls to the ground. Duplicate the contact shadow layer and rename it ground falling shadows. Make the layer 3D, move the anchor point to the bottom of the layer with the pan behind tool, and rotate the layer back on the X axis so it looks like the shadows are flat on the ground. Delete the old masks and add one that covers from the bottom of the door to the base of the pile of glass. Exclude the actor's legs from the mask. You can set up an additional shadow layer for the legs if you wish, but we can't use this layer since it's on a different plane. Remove the drop shadow effect and add a tint effect. Map the whites to a dark gray. Decrease the layer opacity to 40%. Now we need to composite the glass that falls into the shadow of the door. Duplicate the contact shadow layers and rename it ground shadow mask. Add a mask around the sections in the shadows. You will need to animate this to match the movement of the shadow. Copy the mask to the existing ground layers and set it to subtract to separate the two sections. Add an exposure effect to the ground shadow mask and set it to negative 1.5. So here's what that exposure effect is doing. Next, let's cool down the shadows a little bit. Add a hue and saturation effect and adjust the hue to 6 and the saturation to 65. That's looking much better. I'm also going to add a mask to the other ground layers to remove the glass from the actor's legs. Now we don't have any glass sitting on his legs now. Another detail we can add is to leave some glass hanging in the window frame. To do this, we'll start with another tempered glass element, pick a portion of the clip where the glass remains after the shatter, and set a freeze frame. Place it where you want it to be stuck and add a mask to fit it to the window frame. Now repeat all the steps we applied to the fallen glass earlier to change the look of the glass. Do this for as many pieces as you would like to have remain in the window frame. Okay, so I went ahead and added in a couple more pieces that hang in the window after the glass falls. Now let's add some smoke behind the window when it shatters to emulate glass dust. I'm going to add in some smoke elements from our Gunsmoke Volume 1 collection, available on the Action VFX website. I'm choosing Gunsmoke Front 2, 5, and 6 that I already prepared inside of this pre-comp. Place it underneath the glass layers so it appears behind the glass. You will also want to add some mask to the door so it appears behind the door, but I'm going to skip that step for now. 
We need to match the color of the glass, so add a curves effect and increase the blue, the green very slightly, and decrease the red by just a touch. Let's also increase the alpha curves for some more visibility. This is looking good, now let's move over to the windshield. Let's add some bullet hits hitting the windshield towards the beginning of the shot. Car windshields are different from regular glass windows in the way that they shatter. Instead of shattering into multiple pieces and falling inward, the windshield has a layer of film that holds the glass together even when shattered. Since these are on a different plane, we will have to do another track to have the windshield element stick when the vehicle shakes. Since we covered this already, I won't show the process, but just know if you are placing elements in a different part of the shot, it will probably require an additional track. I've called this new track, windshield track. Let's use one of the glass bullet hits. Since we filmed these at 96 frames a second and delivered them at 60, once again we will have to reinterpret the footage to 96 to get them to play back in real time. Add glass bullet hit 3 on top of the windshield and place it where you want it. If your clip lasts longer than the bullet hit, add a freeze frame after the dust settles. We're going to go ahead and parent this to the track so it'll stick. Add a curves effect and increase the alpha channel to make it look less transparent. Add a tint effect and map the whites to a light blue. Change the amount of tint to 35%. Add a Gaussian Blur of 3.0 so it isn't too sharp. I love these bullet hits as this is already looking quite nice, however you can still see the windshield underneath the bullet hole. I found a simple fix that worked well for my shot. I created a new adjustment layer underneath the glass bullet hit 3 layer. So now that the adjustment layer is created, let's mask out a section that aligns with the hole. Alright now let's apply a hue and saturation effect to the adjustment layer. Desaturate the footage by a value of negative 59. Without the blue tint of the windshield, it appears as if there isn't glass where the bullet went through. We can add some additional cracks to further sell this bullet hit. For this bullet hit, let's add Fractured Glass 9 from our free Fractured Glass Texture Pack. You can download these elements free of charge on the Action VFX website. Let's go ahead and put in Fractured Glass 9. And scale that down. These elements come with a black background that we will have to remove. You can set these to screen to remove the background, but for these particular elements I recommend using an unmolt. I prefer to use Red Giant's unmolt from the universe pack, but you can also use the alpha from lightness animation preset that comes pre-installed with After Effects. I'm gonna go ahead and add Red Giant's unmolt. Add a curves effect to the layer and increase the alpha channel. Next we need to add a bluish green color to the crack. Add a tint effect, map the whites to a bluish green color, and change the amount to tint to 70%. You can repeat these steps for as many bullet hits as you would like to add. Another idea is to pull a freeze frame from the tempered glass elements to add a shattered texture over top of the glass. I went ahead and added a few more details to the scene like muzzle flashes and bullet hits in the metal car door. The last thing I want to talk about today though is adding camera shake. For this shot, I pre-composed the entire composition and added a preset from our free camera shakes presets collections. You can watch this tutorial here for a detailed look at adding camera shake to your scene. That was a lot of information to go over, but I hope you were able to learn some new tips and techniques during the tutorial. The biggest takeaway from this tutorial is that it is the little details that add realism to the shot. The small details that you wouldn't immediately think about are what sell the shot to the viewer. So if the time permits, always be thinking how you can take the shot one step further. Be sure to check out all of our glass collections on the Action VFX website, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future content, drop a comment down below. This is Clayton with ActionVFX.com. Thank you for watching.